The Syrian Arab army continues to chase terrorists throughout Syria, killing and wounding a large number of them, including Arabs and foreigners. Hired mercenaries commit a massacre of citizens in Yelda, the Damascus countryside. Terrorist mercenaries carry out the orders of their Wahhabi masters, targeting the Syrian mass media and its employees. And the crimes of al Saud forces continue to victimize the people of the Arabian Peninsula. Good afternoon, welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Daniel Nizam. In Aleppo, a unit of our armed forces clashed with Gulf and Turkish militias, killing several of them while others surrendered with their weapons. Our soldiers also clashed with Gulf and Turkish militias in Al Sukkari quarter, inflicting several casualties among them. In Salahdin quarter, our armed forces confronted the terrorists and chased them, killing and wounding a large number, while others dropped their weapons and took to their heels. Our armed forces also clashed with Gulf and Turkish militias who tried to to storm the radio and TV station. In Khan Hassel, to the west of Aleppo, armed forces killed and wounded large numbers of mercenaries and captured their weapons. In the Aleppo countryside, our security forces destroyed two vehicles and killed the terrorists who used them. In Al Midan quarter in Damascus, our security forces killed three snipers belonging to the terrorist gangs. They were hiding in a room and opened fire at armed forces which were purging the area from the remaining terrorists. In Dumad, our armed forces chased the terrorists and killed a number of them. They also captured a warehouse full of weapons used by the terrorists to kill citizens and to occupy some houses in order to use them as bases for their snipers. The seized weapons included machine guns, ammunition and masks. The security forces also found wireless communication equipment. In Yalda, between Al Tadamun and Al Yarmouk, in Tadamun and Al Yarmouk, in the Damascus countryside, a horrible massacre was committed by terrorist gangs. They kidnapped 20 innocent people, killed them in cold blood, and threw their bodies in a public square in Al Malki Street. Our armed forces entered the quarters of the town, chased the terrorists, and defused a number of mines and explosive devices that were planted by the terrorists in order to create panic. In the Idlib countryside, the security forces chased a terrorist gang in the, te in the forest surrounding the village of Al Janudia near Jisr al Shurur. The terrorists were bandits terrorizing innocent people. The clashes led to the death of several terrorists and the capture of their weapons. They included their leader, Akram al Baghil, Sa Saleh Zakwan al Hamad, Ghazi Haj Yusuf, Ziyad Marwan Afendi, Muhammad Durgham Salamawi, and others. The security forces chased another terrorist group near Khirbet Juz and captured four terrorists and killed the others. In Al Qasir town in the governorate of Homs, the Syrian army staged an ambush for terrorist groups in Al Mazra and Al Burhaniya, killing and wounding those terrorists, in addition to the destruction of two of their vehicles that carried heavy machine guns. In the areas of Arrestan and Talbisa, our brave soldiers chased the terrorists who frightened innocent citizens, killing and wounding a large number of them. Our armed forces clashed with the terrorist gang that was trying to escape to the quarter of Al Qarabis. Dozens of terrorists were killed or wounded. In Al Khalidiyah, the Syrian Arab army clashed with a terrorist group. The clash led to a huge explosion in a warehouse full of ammunition and the death and wounding of large numbers of terrorists. In Hama, the security forces, in collaboration with our citizens, stormed the hiding places of the terrorist gangs. A large number of the terrorists were killed, including Noor Muhammad Ali from Arrestan, Muhammad Sharif Dawood from Talbisa, and Imad Salim Hassan from Deir Zor. Nine terrorists surrendered. It was discovered that the hiding places were connected with underground tunnels where large amounts of weapons were found, including 51 machine guns, RPGs, and Austrian Australian sniper guns, in addition to advanced communication equipment and masks. 
In Daraa, our brave armed forces captured dozens of mercenary terrorists in the countryside. Some of them disguised themselves in military uniforms of the Syrian Arab army in order to distort the reputation of our armed forces through crimes against innocent citizens. Our armed forces foiled this plot and captured the terrorists. Syria's enemies and their terrorist mercenaries have been frustrated because of the failure of their conspiracies. They waged a media campaign in an attempt to block the Syrian information sources and to prevent them from telecasting facts and objective realities to the world, public opinion. So they res resorted to the terrorist crimes of murder and abduction of media men. The steadfastness of the Syrian mass media frustrated and disappointed Syria's enemies. So they targeted the Syrian media, which exposed their false lies and raised the voices of truth that exposed their poisonous lies and vicious instigations. So they began to attack the buildings of TV stations in various places. There were series of sanctions by America, European and Gulf states like Saudi and Qatari regimes against our public and private information media and their journalists. The Syrian mass media continue to carry out their national duty of transmitting the truth. It's worth mentioning that the terrorists financed by Qatari and Saudi regimes attacked and destroyed the office of the Syrian news al Ikhbariya TV channel and killed a number of its journalists. The Iranian Defense Minister Brigadier Ahmed Wahidi warned that the region would witness a major crisis of foreign forces intervened in Syria. Wahidi said that the biggest loser of such an intervention would be the Western states and the states that support the Zionist entity, saying that the West wants to establish a new balance between the Israeli entity and the Islamic countries in the region by excluding Syria from the resistance front. But this will not happen. The Saudi family and its mercenaries continued to use bullets and poisonous gas against demonstrators in Al Qatif and Al Awamiya. They killed a young man and wounded scores of others. Peaceful demonstrations in Al Qatif and Al Awamiya were faced with bullets and gas. The brigades of Al Saud waged a campaign of detention in most cities and towns in the eastern region. Eyewitnesses said that Al Saud forces opened fire on a private car carrying a family. All the people in the car were wounded. Al Saud mercenaries continued to chase the young demonstrators in Al Qatif. Demonstrations have been forbidden completely. The imams of mosques were ordered to announce this or to face detention. The demonstrators protested against decades of corruption and persecution practiced by the Saudi rulers. It is worth mentioning that Robert Fisk in his last article in the independent newspaper said that as the U.S. claims that it wants to spread democracy, its first ally in the region Qatar represents a flagrant tyrannical rule, whereas Saudi Arabia is considered one of the most malicious dictatorships in the Arab world. In Turkey, six soldiers and two guards were killed as 15 soldiers were wounded in clashes with PKK fighters in the southeastern part of the country. Turkish security sources said the clashes also killed 11 components of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, admitting that a large-scale military operation took place in the region. The month of Ramadan is distinguished by being the month of goodness and mercy. It is a chance for the family and relatives to sit together at the table of al-iftar, further increasing the cohesion of society. In Ramadan, the bonds further strengthen among relatives and friends, who by holding the rituals of this month represent the harmony and integrity of society. Perhaps the very table of Ramadan reflects the family reunion. Thank God, being together at the table, especially when the parents are elderly, children who are married, bring the grandsons, so life becomes beautiful. Thank God, Ramadan brings us all together. The customs of Ramadan are for worshipping and mercy. They are to increase bonds and to visit each other for goodness and grace. These points of view represent the people's interest in the unity of the social canava. 
They also portray true image of the customs and habits of the Syrians, which have been inherited over the years. At Aliftar, people eat and meet. The evenings become better by being together. In Ramadan, people become close to their loved ones and visit each others. Great social habits prevail in Syria, not only in the holy month of Ramadan, but also over the whole year. They give strong message that this society adheres to the noble values and is keen to convey this cultural heritage to the forthcoming generations. And with this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. For more news about Syria and the region, you can visit our website, syrianline.sy. And now over to our economic news with Vani after a short break. God bless you, and God have mercy on all our martyrs.